Krishna, everybody. We'll get started with Mangla Charan prayers. Om Ajnanam Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamakyam Dadati Swa Padantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrijatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostude Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabho Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you all for being here. Today I will um, be shortly talking about where in this entire universe are we. Um, more from the cosmology point of view from Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto. And before I start, I really want to thank His Grace Shivas Pandit Prabhu, who is my Bhakti Vaibhava teacher. And uh, if it was not for him, I would not be able to learn any of these beautiful verses from Srimad Bhagavatam. I also would like to thank, um, you know, a few Prabhuji's whose videos I've used and, uh, um, you know, the concepts that I have learned. Uh, Pavaneshwar Prabhu, His Grace Pavaneshwar Prabhu, His Grace Radhisham Prabhu, and His Grace Varandashan Prabhu. Thank you. So I'm actually going to start sharing my screen and um, we will start with the... Where is our earth in this universe? Like, you know, I think most people are, of course, inquisitive to know, you know, where are we in this entire universe? And so I'm just going to start um, talking mostly about, uh, I mean, about this concept from the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and also from Srila Vadi Rajatirtha's Bhugola Varnana, uh, because he was actually uh, one of the renowned Acharya in the Srila Madhvacharya Sampradaya. And um, he actually left this material world to the spiritual world. And on his way, he actually saw the entire universe and he came in the mind of his one of his disciples and he uh, the disciple actually wrote i mean in the instruction of adirajatirtha he wrote bhugola varnana so it, it is concepts taking from both of them and uh, so that we can actually understand so um it's it's more it's more going to be pictorial and uh, video based uh, presentation so i think because cosmology is actually not very easy to understand and I surely don't claim that I know everything. I probably know a drop of what's there in cosmology, but I'm just going to try. So in the process of me learning, doing this class, if anybody else has benefited, I feel myself very fortunate. So Krishna is the source of Mahavishnu, Garbhodakashai Vishnu, and Kshirodakashai Vishnu. So we're actually going to see who these people are and what is the purpose of us learning all this in, in regards to the, um, you know, understanding where we are on, in the universe. So um, Mahavishnu, you see this picture here, he is actually, um, you know, when living entities, we're all part and parcel of Krishna and eternally have to be living in the spiritual world, where there is no birth, where there is no old age, where there's no death and where there's no disease. But when there are living entities who, do, who, who are like the rebels and they say that, no, we want 
our own place. So Krishna comes as Karana Dikashai Vishnu. He's lying down on the Karana ocean. Karana means cause, right? So Karana in Sanskritam, Karana in many languages in India is, means uh, cause. So causal ocean, he is lying down. The cause is that he is going to create this material world. So his breathing actually emanates, you know, his breathing is, is the time that the universes go out and he's breathed when he, when he actually breathes out, the universes go out and when he breathes in, the universes come back to him. So when we breathe as well, our skin pores also breathe. So literally, it's not just from his nose or um, his mouth that these universes are coming. They're literally coming out from every skin pore of Mahavishnu or Karanadikashai Vishnu. So we're actually going to start off with that. We're going to watch a little video on how this happens. All the three worlds, both spiritual and mundane. <laughs> Everything rests in me, Arjun, just as you see pearls hang upon a thread. So this is from uh, Bhagavad Gita, where well, actually Krishna is mentioning to Arjuna. He's mentioning that just as the pearls are strung in a thread, everything is actually created by him and every living entity. He's actually the thread. So Krishna is present in every, I mean, he's the cause of every cause. So, so going back to the main concept, this whole big spiritual world in one corner, Karanadu Krishai Vishnu is lying down and he's creating, by his breathing, he's creating these universes, right? So let's see what happens. Once he, creates, once he creates the universe, you know, you, it's Bhagavatam explains each of the universe to be like a football. So it's a football and, you know, there are several footballs like that. He enters into each of these football as Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu. So Garba, like because he is lying down in the Garbhodaka ocean. Now this is a ball, right? This is one universe. This is another universe. This is the third universe. This is the fourth universe. Each of the universe, he actually enters in and half the universe is filled with an ocean called as Garbhodaka ocean. So Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu, he is lying down on Garbhodaka ocean. And let's go to the next one. Now, very important point. From his navel is a lotus stem that grows and on top of the lotus is Brahma. So as soon as Brahma is born, he's not very sure what's happening. Everywhere there is darkness. Now this is creation. The creation has not happened yet. Everywhere there, there is darkness and he doesn't understand what's happening. He looks around, he sees this wind blowing. He goes through the lotus stem and sees he can't find anything. He only hears one word called tapa. So that means he has, he's supposed to meditate. So when he starts meditating and he meditates for almost 100 celestial years. And after that, he could actually see, um, you know, the Lord within his heart. Now, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam in the third canto. This is explained. Now he realizes, now when he, he sees, um, you know, the Lord within his heart, he actually also gets to see Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu. He sees this beautiful form, huge form of Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu, who is lying down on the Garbhoda, on, on, a, on a sesha, you know, on the snake bed. And now he's taking instructions from the Lord. Now where, what happened to all the living entities who are supposed to come to this one particular universe? They are in the Mahatattva. They're still in uh, Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu's and once Brahma creates the universe, all the planets, at that time, each of the living entity will be put into one particular uh, planet because of their, whatever they desire at the time of death. That is the body that they get. Like Krishna says, Antakalesha Mamiva Smaran Mukpa Kalevara. At the end of your life, whatever you remember, you achieve that, right? If you remember Krishna, you go back to the spiritual world. If you remember, you know, Animals that you took care of, you can even go to the animal body. So depending on what you thought. So here, Brahma now starts creating. Let's see what he does. So before he starts creating, he actually listens to the flute. And the Gayatri Mantra comes through the flute of Krishna. And Brahma hears everything, all the instructions. Because here, he's asking Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu about the instructions. And here, Krishna is playing the flute. Through the flute, he actually listens to the Gayatri. And he understands how to create this entire universe. Now let's look at, now you see, this is one shell that you're looking at, right? This is one universe that Karanadika Shai Vishnu was inhaling and exhaling, right? So here you're looking at, he is into one universe. Now we're, we're not looking all the universes, we're looking at like one little football that Bhagavatam talks about. One in one universe, what all exists, okay? So here you see, 
here you see that garbhodaka shai vishnu is lying down on the garbhodaka ocean remember i said in every ball half the ball is filled with garbhodaka ocean now from his lotus stem i mean from his navel the lotus stem arises and on the top of the lotus stem is brahma now this is this particular thing is brahma loka so this is where brahma is going to stay now brahma starts creating the other things because he got instructions on what to do so most important and very amazing when i first heard it i was really thrilled to know all the 14 planetary systems that we are talking about the upper middle and the lower are actually in the stem of this lotus so in the middle part of the stem is bhu loka and in the up below part of the stem is all the lower lokas and all the upper lokas are on the top so here as we see he this is patala on the bottom rasatala talatala mahatala sutala atala and this is bhu loka this is bhuvar loka swar loka mahar loka jana loka tapa loka and satya loka so all the 14 planetary systems are actually inside the stem now i would want i will not be going in detail about any of the upper planetary systems or lower planetary systems because our earth is in the buloka planetary system so we're going to go more into detail about buloka planetary system today because i mean cosmology is re, can be really huge <laughs> so we are going to go over to the next thing now just imagine if suppose i have the stem right it's cylindrical and i only want to look at the buloka i cut the stem and look from the top now this is a stem that i'm looking from the top this is buloka we are talking about so the buloka so it's going to be a circle right because a cylindrical cone if you cut it when you look at from the top it's going to look like a circle so here we are looking at that buloka what all does it have it has seven dwipas first it didn't have okay first thing i want to tell you is you know when um, brahma creates he creates some beings called prajapatis he tells them please you do all right things and give birth to living entities because you need to have people you need to have a father and mother for every living entity right so one of the kings priyavrata he became the king of this entire bhumandala you get me and he was an amazing he was a great great unalloyed devotee of the lord now he saw that the sunlight was not falling on all the plain middle parts of the bhumandala so you know what he did he actually took his chariot and he was following the sun so that sun can actually be you know shining all over his, the place for all the inhabited living entities so doing that with his chariot wheels he makes seven ditches and each of the ditches becomes a ocean and i'm going to explain this more so you will understand it so the, so now because he created this there are seven dwipas and seven oceans and i'll explain that you know as we go we will understand this better so here you see my dear lord this is from shrimad bhagavatam fifth canto 16th verse just for time i'm not going to read the sanskrit i'm just doing the translation my dear lord the rolling wheels of maharaja priyavrata's chariot created seven ditches in which the seven oceans came into existence because of these seven ocean bhumandala is divided into seven islands so he is the person who divided the entire bhumandala into seven islands and amazingly this is the time now earlier in third canto also we know that shrimad bhagavatam is a conversation between parikshit and shukadeva goswami so parikshit is asking shukadeva goswami in the fifth canto you talked about it very little but can you explain more that is what we are looking at in this and bu mandala is actually this this whatever we saw like a disk right we just saw this this disk it is supposed to be like a lotus flower the center part and with worlds each world is one island you know so of course Uh, with our limited understanding you know our <laughs> simple drawings there are some things that we will not be able to draw and explain but it is considered to be like a lotus flower and um, the the middle part that you see here um let me quickly use my uh, yeah the, the middle part that you see here this little part you, i hope you can see my laser pointer this is actually the jambu dwipa so why, i will tell you why we actually were very interested in jambu dwipa so you see this now this is very very easy to um one second let me undo that okay now if you see this this is one universe right and you are seeing this is garbhodaka ocean remember garbhodaka shai vishnu is lying down and i'm not showing all that in this picture from his navel the lotus stem rises and here is brahmaloka right 
Now, this whole thing is actually the lotus stem. You're seeing the lotus stem here. It's actually a um, disc. Let's consider it to be a CD disc. So CD disc has a little, little like, you know, kids, you see, they put their little finger and they'll be playing like Sudarshan Chakra. Let's consider something like that. So if you put a, your a pointing finger here and the entire disc is around, you will see that this, this finger that's coming out is actually the Meru Parvata. So we will talk a little bit more. So the most important part of this is this entire disc, under the disc, Ananta Shesha is residing, you know, he's holding the earth from beneath. He's holding this entire earth. Let me tell you, this is not, this is Bhu Mandala. And I will tell you, our earth planet is somewhere in the middle. This entire circle is not earth. It is, it is the place where our earth is existing and we will get to know as we go. So you see, this is Meru Parvata in the middle. And next to the Meru Parvata, you will see that there is Jambu Dvipa. I hope you can actually read it. Yeah, you can read it on top there. And around the Jambu Dvipa is salt water ocean. Now, we all know whenever we go to any beach, we only see salt water. So, of course, we have to be in Jambu Dvipa because that is the only Dvipa in Bhumandala which has salt water ocean. So, you see, the Jambu Dvipa has salt water ocean. Next to that, remember Maharaja Priyavrata was going in circles. So, the island is also in a circle and there is water around it. And next island is there and then there is another kind of a liquid around it. So, first Mount Meru, and then you see Jambu Dvipa here. And then you see um, salt water. Uh, around the salt water is another island called as Plakshadvipa. Around Plakshadvipa is the sugarcane ocean. And around <laughs> sugarcane ocean is Shalmali Dvipa. Now we are looking at this in the material world. This is not spiritual world. This is absolutely material world where you get sugarcane ocean, liquor ocean, you have clarified butter ocean, you have milk ocean, and yogurt ocean and clear water ocean. So you see seven islands. Now, amazingly, Priyavrata Maharaj had seven sons. And each of these islands were given to each of the sons. Now, we're going to look at Bhag Bhagavatam and how he has divided that. So you see Jambu Dvipa, saltwater ocean. Then Plaksha Dvipa, sugarcane ocean. Shalmali Dvipa, liquor ocean. Kusha Dvipa, and then... So in some temples, they say you're in Crown Dvipa. They will do a puja. So in, in most temples, when you go, you tell your name, you tell your gotra, you will tell your nakshatra, and they will do a puja. So they say Jambu Dvipe, like if I am doing a puja in, um, you know, anywhere in the temple round. So I'd say Jambu Dvipe, Bharata Varsha, because I'm living in Bharata Varsha, Bharata Khande, because that's part of the Bharata Varsha where I'm actually living. Meru, this is the Meru Parvata. I am on the southern side of Meru. So they will say Meru Chadakshana Dikbage. So when when these mantras are read, it's very nice to hear to them, actually understanding why they are mentioning where we are, because we are letting the Lord know, I am living in this particular place. I'm This is the island I am living in. This is the Varsha I am living in. This is the Khanda I am living in. And my name is this. My Gotra is this. And I, um, you know, the, my Nakshatra is this. And I am offering you the puja. That was That is the reason they, know, they do it. So in the Bhumandala, not only these seven islands are there, one important part, the last island, which is called as the Pushkara Dvipa, if you see. Now, Pushkara Dvipa has a mountain. So I'm, if I'm saying mountain, it's not small. It's around like this whole, all, all the way around. There is a mountain called Manasotra Mountain. So if you see a very small line here, it says Manasotra Mountain Range. On top of the Manasotra Mountain is where the sun goes around. So sun is the sun planet is there is a person called Vivaswan. He goes on a chariot and he goes around the Ma Manasutra mountain. So when he's on the uh, south side, you know, southern side of the earth get light. When he's on the north side, the northern side of the earth get light. So we will talk about it. So remember this Manasutra mountain range is the place where actually on top of it, it's not on Manasutra mountain, but on top of it, he takes that as an orbit and he goes around and around. That is what. So in modern science, we think that sun is the center because ours is a solar system. But according to Bhagavatam, the sun is going around the earth. The earth is sitting at one place. So we'll get to know that as we go. So after all the seven islands, there is another island called Golden Land. And nobody really lives there as such. After the Golden, I mean, uh, because there are some restrictions there. But after that is a huge mountain called Loka Loka Mountain. The Loka Aloka mountain, this mountain, what you see, this range is around this whole thing. And 
local Laka mountain reaches up to the level of the higher planetary systems. So you can imagine, we'll, we'll look at a couple more pictures like that. And then there is Aloka Varsha, and then you see the shell of the universe. So there is a little space between the shell of the universe and this disk, which is called Bhumandala. So here it's mentioned in Bhashimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, 20th chapter, 2nd verse, as Sumeru mountain is surrounded by, so Sumeru mountain, so we're going to really come to Jambu Dvipa because out of all these Dvipas, we live in an island called Jambu Dvipa and it has several other parts to it and we will get to know as we go. So all the other islands, we are we cannot even go there now. <laughs> so we would want to understand today, where are we on this earth, right? I mean, in, in this universe. So when you go over to the next, he says in the fifth canto, 20th chapter, second verse, the Sumeru mountain, which is in the center, is surrounded by an island called Jambu Dvipa. And the Jambu Dvipa is surrounded by ocean of salt water. So at any place when you go, if they're doing a puja, make sure they say only Jambu Dvipa and not any other Dvipa. Because sometimes people think only people in India are in Jambu Dvipa, but that's wrong. The entire earth is in Jambu Dvipa. So, so it doesn't matter whether you are living in US or Australia or uh, you know South America, doesn't matter. You are actually living in Jambu Dvipa, according to Srimad Bhagavatam. So this whole thing, it's like a moat, you know, like you have a fort and around the fort you have water, right? So that's how it is. You have one island, you have a uh, liquor ocean. You have another island, and then you have salt, I mean, uh, uh, sugar ocean, you know, like that, it, it goes on and on, right? So one thing you have to remember that each of these islands were given to one son of Maharaja Priyavrata. So we're going to look at this one more time. This is a beautiful, I have kept two, three, um, you know, videos. So we actually will understand the whole structure. So we are talking about the structure of Bhumandala. So remember, we're not talking about the entire universe, but this Bhumandala. So everything we can see here in another picture, how the entire universe is situated with all the different divisions of Bhumandala. These are, this is the Bhumandala in which all these are different uh, divisions that are situated, etc. Jambu Dipa, Praksha Dipa, Salmali Dipa, Kusat Dipa, Kraucha Dipa, Shaka Dipa, Pushkar Dipa, and surrounded by salt water ocean, sugar cane juice ocean, liquor ocean, liquor fiber ocean, milk ocean, emulsified yogurt ocean, sweet drinking water ocean, like that. These are all situated around it. So that makes it clear, right? So this is the Mameru Parvata and this is Jambu Dipa. We are part of this. We are able to see the saltwater ocean, but beyond the saltwater ocean, there is another island called Plakshadvipa. And be around the island of Plakshadvipa is this is the um, sugar cane juice there. And around the Shalmali Dvipa is a liquor ocean. Around the um, uh, Kushadvipa is so there is each of the dvipas. They have a um, you know they have a, a different kind of ocean. Like can you imagine an ocean with sugar cane juice or milk? Amazing, right? <laughs> So we're actually going to watch one more video so in this. We can see oh, sorry, one second. Another picture. So before we go to that, so I want to mention that Plakshadvipa was actually, you know, um, you, you, you saw the various islands, right? So the, there was Plakshadvipa, which was immediately after Jambudvipa. And Idma, Idma Jiva was the king of Plakshadvipa. He was the son of Priyavrata. The next island was Shalmali Dvipa. And Maharaja Priyavrata's son, another son called Yajna Bahu, took care of that island. The third island was Kushadvipa, and Maharaja Priyavrata's Hiranyareta, that son, took care of that island. The fourth island was Kraunchadvipa, we just saw, and um, it was surrounded by an ocean of milk, and that was taken care by Grita Prista. And the fifth island was Shakadvipa, and uh, Maharaja uh, Priyavrata's son, Meda Titi, was the master there, and you know, he was the king. And the sixth island was Pushkaradvipa, and Vittihotra was the king there. Now, now we're going to look at uh, one more uh, thing, so it will kind of be very clear for us. The planetary system extends out to the edges of the universe and has a diameter of 4 billion miles. Known as Bhumandala, shaped like a lotus flower, it has seven concentric islands and oceans with Mount Meru as its pericarp. The seven oceans respectively contain salt water, sugarcane juice, liquor, clarified butter, milk, emulsified yogurt, 
and sweet drinking water. Sometimes Vedic cosmology is misconstrued as portraying the earth to be a flat disk. This flat earth misconception arises partly due to our inability to understand Vedic nomenclature. A single object may be referred to by several names, and a single name may refer to several objects. For example, the term earth may be used to describe at least six different aspects of cosmology. The earth we live on is indeed a globe as explained by the Sanskrit word parimandale, meaning spherical, used in the Mahabharata text. The flat disk refers to the greater earthly planetary system of Bhumandala. Four elephants of inestimable size are placed at the four directions for balancing the greater earth. Okay, so one important point that I would have to add is we looked at in earlier um, uh, set things, we looked at, sorry, Good one second. So earlier thing we had looked at, if you look at this, um, this whole thing, yeah. So we saw that this is the disc called Bhumandala and people get confused if this is, if earth was flat or earth was, a, was actually, um, you know, a globe. So that is what Prabhu was mentioning in that particular video that earth is flat, this whole disc also is sometimes called earth. But this is not, this is like the earthly system, the entire planetary system of the earth. So it's called Bhumandala and our little globe, which we live in is called Parimandala. Parimandala actually means in Sanskrit, it's actually a globe. So we do live in a globe. We do live in a globe, but we live in another bigger earthly. It, that's why he said sometimes in Sanskrit, you call, you say one name and that one name can actually mean two, three things. So that was the little, um, you know, I just want to make sure that everybody has had got that. Planetary and, system uh, extends out. So we're going to, so now when you look at this, this is the last video about this one. I want to make sure everybody gets it. And then we can, so this is the, then comes Mill, uh, salt water ocean, Jambudvipa. then comes Pushkara Dweepa, then comes the Sugar Changes Ocean, then comes Salmali Dweepa, then comes Likar Ocean, then comes Pushkara Dweepa, then comes Clarified Water Ocean, Kroncha Dweepa, Milk Ocean, Saka Dweepa, your emulsified yogurt ocean, then Pushkara Dipa. Exactly in the middle of Pushkara Dipa is Manasutar Mountain. On top of this Manasutar Mountain are the four townships of the four devatas and four directions. So, so remember, it's a mountain. It can start from Bhumandala, but it's a mountain, it can go till up. So when it goes to little, little upper to the heavenly plants, there, there, on the east is the main office of Indra. On the south is the office of Yama. On the left, it, it is the office of Varuna and on the top is the office of Soma. So that's what Prabhu is mentioning. Uh, Indra is in the east, Yama is in the south, Varuna in the west and Soma in the north. And sun is said to be traveling above this particular Manasutra mountain making it as his own orbit. This is what is said in sweet drinking water. Then uh, there is uh, Golden Land, followed by there is Lokaloka Mountain, followed by there is Aloka Varsha, then followed by Universal Covering. This is the entire sector of the entire Bhumandala. I'm actually going to stop here, just uh, making sure if we have any questions. Um, anybody has any questions and we can actually probably take more um, as we go. Uh, I mean, I'm I have to finish a lot more, but I was just making sure that we have some concept of what I have talked till now. Anybody has any questions? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Dandavat Pranam, all glory to Shri Prabhupada. So nice, Mataji. I read this uh, canto and then uh, I was totally confused. I also did not have Bhagavata Subodhini at the time. So it's, it's too complicated. I think uh, you have done such a great research of collecting all these videos and uh, you have summarized it very well. So at least I could uh, mentally pictureize what is going on. So my question, Mataji, is, is it fair to understand that, you know, the, you, you, you told that the Brahma's lotus stem is there and you're taking a cross section of it. You're taking the cross section and then from the Jambudvipa is the center and then there are concentric circles around that. 
so is it right to understand that the whole that bhumandala is actually a sphere within that sphere there are a lot of smaller spheres around these globes which are all called earthly planets no prabhu so bhumandala is a, is actually a terra shaped we are going to come to that it's okay. actually not a flat also it's more terra shaped it's like this like for example jambu dwipa you walk one step down is plaksha dwipa you walk one step down is the next ocean you walk one step down so it's more a terra shaped that's why this the the analogy that prabhu was giving is it's a, it's actually like a um, flower so the pericarp of the flower you know the pericarp the center part mm-hmm. the center part is is like this right it's it, it's protruding mm-hmm. it considers that to be like the meru parvata and mm-hmm. you know you see, you see each of the island is like a so these are not the islands that are globe I mean, i'm not i will not be covering that part but the other but the i mean sorry planets i mean not islands so the planets that are above us like for example sun is a globe <laughs> moon is a globe neptune uranus those glo- those are all globes mm-hmm. but in uh, bhumandala so that's the that's the confusion that i showed that video for bhumandala actually means the the flat surface i mean almost flat but i said little terra shaped in the center so almost flat surface that is bhumandala we are going to come to see where exactly earth's planet is now remember the story of uh, hiranyaksha mm-hmm. hiranyaksha put the bhumandala in garbhodaka ocean the entire bhumandala only earth the globe he put the whole disk in the ocean okay that is the time that um, varahatal comes and he lifts the disk out of the water but that is also mandala right mata ji bhumandala he is putting in the earth mandala yes. means again it's like it's like, isn't it a spherical uh, shape and uh, you said that i mean is it so no no that is pari mandala prabhu mandala means con- con- like together i mean lots of mm. it's a system like solar system right you get to things together lot of things together so mm. that's my understanding prabhu but i can check but my understanding is boom mandala is not uh, globe so it's see we always come across is earth flat or is earth globe right so this is also actually in sometimes called earth even the globe ah uh, where we live is also called earth that's why this confusion hmm. and uh, thank you mata ji that is that is very helpful uh, can i ask one more question yes. follow up to that so are there several earthly planets around this entire bhumandala yes okay there are millions yeah. of them. yeah so so prabhu i mean we are looking at like ours we will actually get to see there are a lot more lot of things that we are going to go over so it's not only bo earth there are there are in bharata varsha there are nine parts ours is bharata kanda so you will see there are so many more things and i i mean even after doing cosmology you will wonder where i wonder that i am in this small tiny place and i am a tiny jeeva here who in the world gave me this idea to be envious of krishna <laughs> and he's breathing universes <laughs> so yeah yes prabhu does it help prabhu yes prabhu thank you so much Oh, are you able to, to hear the computer volume? Yes, ma'am. I am able to hear. Yeah, yeah, we are able to hear, but you know, it's not so uh, like very, yeah. very clear. I'll say it is. Mm-hmm. It is. It might be for the um, like first time hearing people might be have some. Um, oh, sorry. Those, so those who are not having enough uh, context might have some problem to hear. I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, I will make sure that I. Hare Krishna Madhav ji this is Ashram Madhav Hare Krishna Prabhu Ashram uh, so, yeah this is Ashram Madhav Das so there is on the board there is a question uh, from Pankaj Sharma Prabhu he is asking where can we get this information to study whatever we are sharing in oh, the video Oh Shrimad Bhagavatam uh, canto 5 is entire cosmology and um, you could also do, I will send I can send the links to whoever I can put the links here I can send it to Giridhar maybe he can just email it Yeah. so a uh, um, there is a entire there are 40 videos on cosmology by his grace um uh, pavaneshwar prabhu from uh, bhakti vidanta vidyapeet so he goes into every detail so all your questions about uh, cosmology will be 100% clear once you watch those videos i hope that helps you okay thank thank you madam mukharavind prabhu did you have a question Uh, yes madhi thank you so much um, i was enjoying uh, the whole presentation thank you for bringing us uh, the chitkumar who was telling to bring all these points together and <laughs> and so many relevant videos and everything so 
thank you so much i just have one question that um, that parimandal concept i, I was not able to understand and is basically like um, <clears throat> when we see right jayadev goswami um, says that right uh, when that earth uh, uh, the one that vara dev um, we were we were discussing about vara dev lifting the earth and then he says bhugolam udbhivrate so he he used the word bhugolam udbhivrate like when at the last verse um, when is uh, the saotara uh, the last extreme last words so yeah. he used the words bhu golam udbhid is he used the word golam so bhu golam so if you can just little bit clarify what is that means of bhu golam yeah prabhu my understanding is whatever i i have understood my limited capacity i'll answer that so i said it's a terra shaped right so it's not totally flat it's not a flat surface so on the top if you see it will be like this and on the bottom also it's going to be like this because there are lower planetary systems under the bhumandala so in one sense if you see it will the 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 disk will be like this it will be oval okay it will it will be long oval so in one sense if you see it can be so gola bhu um, what did you say bhugolam bhugolam yeah. yeah so bhugolam so in one sense it can come to that as concept also but i don't have a 100 percent answer for that prabhu because okay. he, he does say that the, it is terra shaped it's not completely flat we are going to see that as we go but yeah it's it it is going to have you will have um so that's a that's a very good question prabhu i i will do some research and get back to you sure and another thing like he, the, as you told that this is already floating on the top of garbhoda question right the current bhu mandal is already on so the top of it's not floating prabhu it's not floating so actually this bhu mandala on the top there is there is loka loka mountains right around yeah mm-hmm. so on top of the loka loka mountain there are four elephants on four directions to hold it Mm-hmm. under the bhu mandala there is eight more elephants that hold it mm-hmm. and below the bhu below the um, that there is also ananta sesha i see so it's so, not like directly floating on the garbhoda no, kosha no, no. i see so ananta sesha is also holding it uh, the snake if you saw, saw the first uh, the second the last i'll yes. go back to the picture you will actually see ananta sesha there it's very tiny but you know and he is also holding it he is actually resting himself on the garbhodaka ocean and he is holding it like that i see and I then see. on top there is one beautiful picture actually let me check if i can actually show that picture one second i want to stop share yeah so um, sorry okay so um yeah yes prabhu you can ask i mean in the meantime i'm going to quickly look at it no and and the other thing i was like they, he lifted from rasatal or something also it says or garbhoda i am not able to remember rasatal actually, or... <laughs> actually he says um hiranyaksha says it belongs to us in the rasatala planets it doesn't belong to you oh i see yeah I see, okay. hiranyaksha says this belongs to us and then krishna i mean when varahadev just uh, kills him in that context he says no it doesn't it doesn't i see thank you mother you okay got it yeah yeah so i'm going to just show you this um uh, one second oh, sorry shukeshwari mata ji i have just yes prabhu i have, this is asra mata das again one comment goal so there is a, sometimes the distinction is made no a anda anda can also be called goal but a circle can also be called a goal yes goal is round and then anda is actually what is the sphere Okay. So goal can be used for both a sphere and a circle, flat surface, flat circle. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Yeah. So you see this. This is Bhu Mandala. Now Bhu Mandala. We talked about all the concentric islands which are there are here around here. Okay. And in between, in Jambu Dwipa is the Earth, and this is the Moon, and this is the Sun, and these are the Loka Loka Mountains, and this is Aloka Varsha. where there are no no people living this is loka because there are people living and you see here the first eight elephants on top of okay. so you, you mm-hmm. see this is loka loka mountain right on top yes, of the, now we are only seeing what two sides but actually it's around it's circle right on top of the loka loka mountain there are four elephants and under the bhumandala also there are eight elephants that's holding the bhumandala and below that you see this ananta the sesha Mm, yes mata ji yeah. actually a snake <laughs> yeah i don't know if you can see it yeah and then you, of course you see the turtle but this is this is where the whole uh, garbhoda kaushans and that is how it's so when hiranyaksha so if you see this is this is bhumandala right so these are the lower mm-hmm. planetary systems which are under the bhumandala okay 
So a part of the Meru Parvata goes under and most of the part actually goes above. On top of the Meru Parvata are the uh, places of uh, Indra, Chandra, Varuna, Surya, whoever the four people that I said, their offices are there and they come and work there and go. Of course, their planetary systems are here, here a little bit more above. Yeah. Yeah. Hare Krishna Mataji, I actually had a question. Uh, oops, I guess um, I'm unable to hear you now. Oh, you can't hear me? Yeah, now I can. Yes, please. So uh, the diagram that you showed initially, which had those rings, and then uh, you mentioned that uh, sun is on the outermost ring. Mm, yes. Luxury. And then in between, there were uh, those different oceans. Uh, so like from a, um, from our own perception that uh, from the limited senses that we have, um, are those like milk oceans and the yogurt oceans, are those in some different dimensions? And otherwise, should we be able to like see them between earth and sun through some instrument or something like that? Very, very nice question, Prabhu because this question was asked. <laughs> this question asked Prabhu, answer this question also. He said, I can see the moon, I can see the sun. Why can't I see the, uh, Varsh, I mean, why can't you see the islands next to me, right? He said, because out of the, um, you know, even for Bharata Varsha, I'm going to go into that because we want, we have to find out where we are at out of this. The dimension in which they are is different. Forget about those oceans. Even in Bharata Varsha, Bharata Kanda is the ninth part. The other eight parts we cannot see. You know why? Because other eight parts are most pious living beings who come here to go back to the spiritual world. And there they actually have, they actually live like how people used to live in Treta Yuga. They live for 10,000 years. If I'm not wrong, I'm going to check 10,000 years. And they actually have a nice, I mean, they also can enjoy if they want to. They can, they actually have association with women very easily. They never have children just before they die, one year before they die. They gave birth to one child and then they pass away. So that level of, um, uh, that is also in Bharata Varsha. Our earth planet is only the ninth part. The eight parts are the most, uh, they, are, they are almost like heavenly planets. So even those we cannot see is because he says, it's he compares it with water and vapor. Like when you see water, you can see water, right? But when it becomes vapor, you cannot see the water anymore. Right. So they're in a different, so the water, the liquid becomes gas, right? So there is a different dimension to those varsha, those um, parts of the Bharata Varsha that you will not be able to see. Right. So technically, not just things between the so-called earth and sun, but also the things on our own country, if that's what Bharata Varsha. Bharata Varsha. Forget about that, Prabhu. Even Meru Parvata, we cannot see. We have very, I mean, in one sense, we are pretty close to Meru. Even we cannot see Himalayas completely. There is something called Upper Himalayas where actually Kailasha is there where mm -hmm. Lord Shiva, Parvati and live with her with their children. We, when we go to Kailasha mountain, I mean, so-called Kailasha mountain, Manasa Gangotri in um, our Himalaya, we don't see all that. And that story actually comes in Mahabharata also when, um, you know, what is her name? Draupadi wanted this beautiful lotuses. So she says it is there after the Gandamadana hill. Can you go? We, we, when you read Mahabharata, at that time, the, those living beings say that you cannot come to this side. So, because they were very pious, you know, they were able to talk to such people. So he goes, he says, there is another lake, the other side, where you can get Draupadi, the flower. So he goes to the other side and he gets the flower. So there is a higher part of the Himalayas, which currently, even though we go to the highest Everest peak, we still cannot see after that. There is actually Himalaya still above, above what we can see. Wow. And I'm just curious, the beings that you talked about in the remaining eight parts, uh, who are like much more pious and... Um, much more capable uh, those beings uh, do they just come here for like preaching purposes otherwise mm -hmm. their actual position should be in I, I don't know Prabhu that is not mentioned in Bhagavatam but I'm going to go take you there I'm going to take you about talking about those living entities Prabhu. I'm just going to finish that part before I go um, uh, Chayant you had a question you are talking on mute no. See, when uh, we go to Bharata Varshe, Bharata Kande, so what are the other eight uh, Kandas I wanted to ask and you clarified it now. And another thing uh, I wrote, where is Meru now? So that also you said we cannot see. Because all, I will person. show you exactly. Now we are actually going to get to the middle Jambudvipa and see what all there in the Jambudvipa. Okay. Yeah. 
So yeah, we thank will you. continue. Yeah, thank you. So um, uh, Jairaj Prabhu, if you have more questions, we can take it towards the end. Is that okay? Yeah, sure, Mataji. Thanks a lot for explaining everything so nicely. Thank you, Prabhu. Mother, just one quick question. So the the salt ocean that you are saying is that the same as like Hind Mahasagar, like the one that we have in yeah, India, yeah. like yes, is the same. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. So I'm just going to go over to the next one because I think we all got some good amount of. Now we are going to just go into the oh, Sir Sergio Prabhu, you raise your hand. You're on mute, Prabhu. Yes, I'm sorry. So this, this, uh, this, this uh, you, you, you're not able to see it. It's because of that. That do we need to bring ourselves in a higher spiritual level within this uh, time and space matter, so we are able to see it, or, or if someone is seeking for it, or, or, it, or. Or this is something that it can happen when you are a spiritual being. So Prabhu, this is not a spiritual world. The Bharata Varsha that I talked about, we are, so this is Bharata Varsha. We are in one place. The Bharata Varsha is divided into nine parts. And the ninth part is Bharata Kanda. We are living in Bharata Kanda now. So the other nine, eight parts, which I said are very opulent. So many people are there. They are also good spiritual beings, but they also have a choice of, you know, enjoying so we should not really aspire to go there. Our goal should be directly going back to Goloka. The uh, reason I ask this question, what am I, why am I reading this cosmology so much in detail? Who lives where, what they do, what kind of... Now we're going to look at how there is mango waterfalls. There is sugarcane waterfalls. Why am I looking at all that? Prabhu gave a very nice answer, Shankaran Prabhu in the morning class. He was mentioning that when I leave this body and when I'm focused to go back to spiritual world, I will actually be leaving this entire universe and... I will actually see all this with my eyes. If I knew it ahead of time, I will not be attracted to it. I know there are beautiful things in the material world also, but I have nothing to do with this and I can go fly away. Even if I stop one minute and think, oh, wow, this is beautiful. Well, I will have to stay there for some more time. <laughs> so, so this is to, to be aware when you are in the way to, to the higher planets, not get distracted to this exactly. when you see it. Okay. Exactly. There okay. is a lot of opulence in this material world. There are places where you can live for, like Brahma Loka, you can live for as long, I mean, literally for eternity. I mean, so much time you can live. But do you really want to live in a place where there is birth, old age, and death in the sea? So our goal is not to go to any other place in this material world, Prabhu. We want thank you. To go thank, out you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to share the screen so we can continue and make sure that we finish that part. And so, okay. Now, remember we talked about this is this is actually Jam Jambu Dweepa. So I'm going to go back to make sure everybody knows where this part came from. Remember this whole thing, all the islands, the middle part, the blue part that you're seeing, that is Jambu Dweepa. So we're actually going to go. So Priyavrata had seven sons. He gave each of his son one of the islands of Bhumandala. The center island, Jambu Dweepa, was actually taken care by Agnidra. Agnidra was a king. He was very attracted towards a damsel called Purvachitti. And he and Purvachiti gave birth to nine children. Now, that's the reason Jambu Dweepa, this you see, this is Jambu Dweepa. Jambu Dweepa has nine parts to it. So it has Ramyaka Varsha, Hiranmaya Varsha, Kuru Varsha, Bhadrashva Varsha, Ketumala Varsha, Hari Varsha, Kimpurusha Varsha, and Bharata Varsha. So you see in this Jambu Dweepa, this gold thing that you're seeing in the center is the Meru Parvata. The Meru Parvata, and one important thing I want to say, I won't go into all the details of all the Varshas. A couple of the, the details I will surely go through. This, this particular part that you're seeing, this is called Ailavrita Varsha. You know, in Ailavrita Varsha, <coughs> um, Mother Durga and Shiva, they live here. They live here. And Mother Durga has, you know, she has put a rule. Anybody who enters this, even by mistake, this particular forest that they live in, they have this, there's a beautiful forest there and that particular forest, anybody enters, that person becomes a lady. If it's a boy, um, he becomes a lady. Of course, if you're a lady, you remain a lady because it's the secluded part where Lord Shiva and Parvati stay. Now, this is Bharata Varsha. You see this little thing that you're seeing? These are all mountains, okay? So I'm just going to show you just a little bit of how it is. So this particular thing is the Himalayas. 
you see this is himalaya now i'm showing it to you like this because you know in bhagavatam it doesn't say i will show you how bhagavatam explains this is from remember i told you this is also from bhugola varnana there are, there is another book so here if you see this is hemakuta mountain this is himalaya mountain this is nishada mountain this is malyavan neela this is gandamadana hill we would have heard these names in our you know history textbooks of times and this is shweta so like that each of the varshas each of the varsha has a presiding deity and um, you know they have one particular devta that i mean um, incarnation of the lord that they actually worship now himalaya mountain in this side of the himalaya you have kailasha hill kailasha hill is where shiva parvati and with their kids <coughs> ganesha and kartikeya they live there actually so they actually have i mean live there but here only sh- <coughs> Shiva and Parvati live. So this is called Ayurveda Varsha. This is the place where, in in these places, if you read Bhagavatam, I mean, I I don't think we will have so much time to go in detail. Each of the each of the places there are Kadamba Kana. There is beautiful forest, and actually, um, in one of the places, as I said, there is, um, you know, the trees are so big, and the mangoes are so big. It seems that the mangoes fall on the, um, you know, <laughs> fall on the rocks. and they make mango waterfalls and the celestial damsels actually come to enjoy here so there is so much now we are going to to now look next into this part which is called the bharat varsha now we are going to go over to what is bharat varsha so this is so as i said uh, <coughs> agnidra is the king of this particular place so agnidra is um has nine kids and he gives each of the kid their particular share okay so priyavrata was the whole um, you know he had the whole uh, bhumandala and he divided into his seven sons and one of the son was agnidra agnidra gave it to seven nine of his sons and that's why there is nine verses it's easy to remember because priyavrata had seven sons so there are seven islands with seven oceans and agnidra where we are more interested in we'll be reading more in detail because every bhagavatam depends on that's the reason um, you hear that the bhagavatam that people learn in the higher planetary system is different to bhagavatam i here because every character that i talk about in shrimad bhagavatam would have lived here most of it like we talk a great detail on agnidra's lifetime we talk about uh, you know of course as we go into 10th canto we also talk about yadu dynasty so they are all people who lived in bhumandala and especially jambudvipa so purva chitti is the one that gave the nine kids now in bhagavatam our bhagavatam this is the picture that we usually go over where you know this is himalaya mountain this is bharat varsha himakuta nishada and mount sumeru now understand that mount sumeru is actually going till even higher planetary system and when lord um, lifted his leg and um, you know when the causal ocean started dripping so it started falling down it came you know there is a big story how in what steps it came it first came down to uh, one place it came down to another place and from there you know, there were people there were devotees who were carrying it in airplanes the ganga water was carried in airplanes and it was then dropped it was dropped on sumeru mountain so on mount sumeru you see on the sides from one side second side third side fourth side there are the ganga is called by different names like she is called gandamadana or uh, you know she she is called it different names depending on where she is flowing of course she comes down and she comes to himalaya and then of course for us her start is from himalaya right so this is the picture that we usually and you see this is the salt water ocean around all of us not only bharat varsha the entire jambudvipa even kuru varsha bhadrasho varsha every every around each and every varsha it is a salt water but remember because of these four mountains right there is no sun in the ailavrata varsha but presence of lord shiva makes it very bright so yeah so i just wanted to mention for sake of those who would be more interested this is tension in the fifth canto of shrimad bhagavatam among the nine varshas the tract of land one second i can see it okay um so here we're talking about the nine varshas that is jambudvipa right so among the nine varshas is talking about the tract of land called bharata varsha is understood to be the field of fruitive activity remember mostly i mean all the people who are living in higher plant system they want to come to bharata varsha because bharat varsha is actually a place for highly elevated persons so learned scholars and saintly person declare there other eight verses to be very highly elevated pious persons as we just discussed so bharat kanda is only one and bharat varsha is um, has another eight 
So after returning from heavenly planets, they enjoy the remaining results of the pious activities in the high eight verses. So Sergio Prabhu, when you said that for enjoying, this is their leftover enjoyment that they finished in uh, there and they come to heaven from heavenly planets to here because <coughs> to go out of this universe, back to spiritual world, Bharata Varsha is the, is the launching pad. <laughs> you have to be in Bharata Varsha to go back to the spiritual world. Of course, there is always you know, other ways that you can go, not that nobody from the spiritual other places they go, but this is actually the most pious place, pious activities happening. And so all of them, even in heavenly planets, Indra Loka, they want to come to Bharata Varsha if they are spiritual, if they want to get rid of this uh, world and go back to Godhead. Now, in these eight Varshas of tract of land, human beings live 10,000 years. We are talking about the other eight Varshas of Bharata Varsha. Now, I want to make sure you understand, I'm not talking about any of these Varshas. I'm only talking about this Bharata Varsha. This little part that you're seeing, this Bharata Varsha is divided into nine parts. And I'm talking about the eight parts of the nine parts. So the ninth part is us. We live in the Bharata Kanda. So all inhabitants are almost like demigods. They have this bodily strength of 10,000 elephants. And indeed, their bodies are sturdy as thunderbolts. Now, the youth duration of their lives is very pleasing and both men and women enjoy sexual union with great pleasure for a long time. After years of sensual pleasure, when a balance of one year is left, the wife conceive a child. Thus, the standard of pleasure for residents of these heavenly regions, they are heavenly regions which are in Bharata Varsha, is exactly like that of the human beings who lived in Treta Yuga. Treta Yuga, people lived for 10,000 years. They, did, they were, you know, that is the thing, you know, because here, anytime you have a union, there is a child born. But in those places, the child is born only the last year when it is, it is remaining. We know in Indra Loka, people don't have gross birth and gross death. So they only have two things. <laughs> they have, uh, they get, of course, you know, they're, they're, they're just living, they enjoy, they're young. But then at the correct time of when they're going to leave uh, their, their body, they just pass away. They don't have oldness like how we have it here. So now here, I just want to actually show you so this is, if you think this is, this is Meru Parvata and this is Himalaya mountain. So you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These nine are the Bharata Varsha and one part is the Bharata Khanda. So we'll see here, remember I told, this is the Bharata Varsha, this is the Himalaya mountain. I mean, this is Himalaya mountain around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and ninth. That's why ours is like a globe, not like the semicircle or you know, concentric circles of the other islands that we saw. So this is, this little thing that we see, the ninth one is actually the globe. That is the Bharata Khanda that we live in. Now, it's amazing. Actually, it is said in Google Varnana that our earth is not only not going around anywhere, it is actually standing on a ice column. Now, uh, I, I got all this from uh, Pavanesh Prabhu's research. So, you know, if you see, this is the entire Jambu Dvipa. So our earth, this is the ninth. And this around this is the eighth. And then there is the sixth, like that. I mean, seventh and sixth. So you see, this is the nine Varshas of Bharata Varsha. This is the ninth division. And so this is the ninth division that you're seeing again, just making it more clear. Now, if you see, these are the flight routes too, um, that do not exist. You know, we know, we know Arctic is the Northern Pole and Ant Antarctic is the Southern Pole. South Pole, Nobody has ever been to the middle of the South Pole. So even going from Australia to a thing, they will always, I'll show you the other map where, um, oh, I, I don't think I put that map here. So wherever they want to go, you know, wherever they want to go around, they will never touch Antarctica. Now it is, it is um, one of the uh, scientists, one of the astronauts from India, he had, he is actually, um, um, you know, he went with the several people for South Pole expedition. Now, if you go to South Pole, he said that all the NASA centers are only in the border. They, were ne they are never in the center. So the NASA centers are all in the border here. And that's how it does. So they did this balloon experiment. NASA did this balloon program where they let a balloon go and they actually traced the balloon. They let the balloon go here. And again, it came back here on, on um, you know, in about 20, 25 days. So that's this, they're also thinking that there is, lot of there is nothing but there is a columns actually i do have some picture that i want to show you on that i'm going to stop then so they have this uh, columns of um, what is it called um they have a lot of these ice columns and um which actually looks like um let me okay let me share this 
I'm, I'm just going to share this because this actually. Okay, so if you see, these are the um, flights. They, they, they never have the flights to the South Pole. It's always away from the South Pole. In 1960s, they didn't have, 2000, they didn't have, even till 2020, they didn't have to the South Pole. So if you see, these are the Admiral uh, columns that you have, uh, you know, this is a flight that went near, in and around Antarctica, these are the poles that you're seeing. So which confirms what is said in uh, Bhagavatam that nobody is able to go travel through South Pole. Why? You know, it says actually, it is actually, um, the word that is used exactly is it's perked. Bhagavat, I mean, the Sanskrit word means perked. Perked means standing on something. So um, I will stop there and then we'll take some questions and then, then I can probably cover if, if we have time a little bit more. I have a question, Mataji. Yes, Thank you so much, so much, Mataji. Now, you know, after reading Bhagavatam and after, after attending your class, I was able to recollect all the things and understand it properly. Thank you for uh, taking us. Uh, uh, yeah, all glories to all the devotees who helped me learn it, Prabhu. <laughs> so, so Mataji, so in that case, is the earth not moving, rotating by itself? No. So it is static. It is standing still. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, um, so that's the, uh, that was one of my questions. Okay. Thank you. Prabhu. So, so Prabhu Mataji, there is nothing called gravity. <laughs> Oh, there is. Uh, it's Krishna's energy, Prabhu. Gama Vishir Shabhutani Dariya Mihamo Jasa. Krishna Mi Chavasati Sarva Soma Bhutvara Satmaka. He says that um, I'm, I'm actually the force. I'm actually the reason behind all the planets are in the orbit, right? In Bhagavad Gita. So it is Krishna <laughs> that's pulling things down. <laughs> but yeah. I can, I don't have an answer to that, Prabhu. I'm so, just so Mataji, just to go back to that picture, right? You had where is the globe and then it is standing on columns, right? Yes, it's a globe, yeah. it's sort of a like a you know like a golf ball where they where they put it on a puck right like that. So the Earth is like that, right? So but when when the flights are going like that, so I'm assuming it is gravity which is keeping them. Otherwise they will fall down. So there is gravity. Yes, yes, Prabhu. Yes, yes. I mean we cannot say that nothing in science is right, right? Of course there is gravity. Otherwise there we would not be able to exist. We'd be floating, right? So that means when they're they, when they're seeing those big pillars, right? It looks like ice pillars. They look like that picture you showed. Those pillars are are the basically where the Earth is supported. We cannot see where Earth is supported, right? Prabhu? They're not able to reach the South Pole exactly. But but if if let us say they the, if they the, can really reach. But if but they, but they can see the see the part where that those are connected to the Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, not the other side where it where it is resting. No. That part they don't see. Yeah, because you know you are only going towards the col column towards the outer part of the south pole. You're not Base going to the, the center column. of the south pole. Right. And no, there has not been any flights that far. You know, from Australia, if you want to come, to, you can go from down, right? Right, right, right. It never goes. You yeah. always go up and then go back. It's always going like this or going around. It's never from like like when you're going through North Pole, right? You actually can mm -hmm. fly through North Pole and go to the other side. Right, right, right. But, okay. But yeah, I have uh, another question. Yes, sir. So we have this uh, Navagraha concept, right? The nine grahas. Yes, sir. So and uh, also solar system also has Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and all that. How 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 are they described in this uh, setup, Mataji? So they are there, Prabhu. They are above. They are above um, the Blue Mandala. There are planets above Blue Mandala, Prabhu, and they are actually going in circles. So fifth canto actually does talk about it. Um, let me uh, let me see if I can get that uh, video really quick, Prabhu. Um, so So yes, Prabhu, there is, there is, a, there is, that whole, all the planets are there. I mean, I would not say that if all of the planets that we are talking about is there, I mean, the modern science is talking about is there, but uh, let me try to get that one second. So there is Mercury, there is Venus, there is uh, um, Saturn. Yes. So 
So it is actually Prabhu, it's in the chapter 21 of fifth canto, 21 to 24. I give you can read it too. So fifth canto, chapter 21 to 24 describes the entire movements of all the planets. Okay, Mataji. But like are they are they in uh, they are not in Bharata Bharata? No, 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 Prabhu. So let me let me I'm trying to get that exact video which actually so only earthly planets are there in this Bharata Varsha. Ah, uh, hold on, Prabhu, one second. I want you to see this. So you see this, Prabhu? This top, this is actually uh Dhruva, Dhruva planet. Dhruva, Dhruva Loka is actually holding like a chandelier. And all of these planets, you see all these planets, and the, the below is the Bhumandala, what we talked about. All of these planets are going around. And this is explained in the chapter 21 um, of uh, the fifth canto. Did I say 21? Yeah, 20. I have to check again. It's, it's text 21 to 24, but I think it's chapter 21. So it's like this, Prabhu. There are all planets and they are actually free, free floating. But again, remember, they are free floating, but... So they are they are also moving. Sun is also moving. Actually, it's a whole big subject, Prabhu, because the way that sun, um, you know, sun is going on the um, Manasutra mountain, and the planets are also going on top like that. Some of the planets, not all the planets, you know, we our Earth planet is down sitting; it's not going anywhere. So we cannot totally say that uh, what, uh, but solar systems really says the sun is in the center and we go around the sun. So in that way, that's not right. I mean, according to Bhagavatam, that's not the thing. But I can I can go more in detail, Prabhu. It's actually there in, um, what did I say just now? It is there in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth, fifth canto, and um, 21st chapter. Yes. 21st chapter and uh, 21st to 24th verse. Can you check that, Prabhu? Yeah. Yeah, actually, the whole thing, Mataji, becomes very complex because of this modern science education we have, and they have a completely different perspective, and that brings to and they have and not only that they have a lot of animations and they have a lot of pictures out there, right? So which contradicts this concept which is there in Bhagavatam. This Bhagavatam, when people did not know all that, this perfectly explain actually all the astronomical calculations. What you do. You can completely explain with the Bhagavatam model. Yes, there is no need for that external. You can e explain each and every movement of star based on the Bhagavatam model. Calculate where it will go and all. That's true, Prabhu. But you know, olden days, people used to follow that. We were yeah. not connected to any Western world, right? Yeah, about yeah. even uh, maybe about three, four generations ago, right. before uh, um, you know, we had uh, uh, the influence of English. Right. So, you know, we, of course, had wonderful, uh, uh, you know, uh, we had Gurukula system and everybody was actually following things. They were reading from uh, Bhagavatam. Their school books were Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. You yeah. know, that's how they learned. But um, unfortunately, but you know, one thing I feel that is fortunate that um, this happened. Otherwise, people in the Western world would not have received the English Bhagavatam. We all became mm -hmm. very well versed with English, I feel, because mm -hmm. of the English influence. And mm -hmm. there are so many more people who really want to read, you know. Right, right. It's not just limited to Bharata. <laughs> I mean, uh, India. So, you know, the other confusion is India is called Bharata, right? <laughs> yeah. So, when with Bhagavatam, you know, Bharata Khanda means the entire globe. Yeah, yeah. Bharata Varsha, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and this... The, the, what I was trying to say, the sun moving is a very natural thing to believe and the earth steady. If someone you ask, you know, even a layman, he will say, I can see sun moving and moon moving. What do you mean by the earth is moving? <laughs> earth I'm seeing it's standing here. That's it. Sun and moon is what is moving. I can see. I can see if I see every three months, I will see even the stars are moving. Yeah. Right. But I don't see earth moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so that's that's the thing. So so they, they explained it in a very commonsensical way, actually, the whole thing. Yeah. It, it is confusing to us because of our modern education. Yeah, we have to unlearn and relearn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. Thank you for putting all this. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yeah. If you don't have, I mean, if you have any other questions, I can take it. Otherwise, I can um, you know, we can look at um. 
So I tell you. everybody, do you get, sorry, go ahead. Tell me, you can go ahead, I'll ask after that. Yeah, I was just thinking, Ashtar Kumar Prabhu, did you, did you, were you able to look at it? Do you want me to pull those verses up, Mataji? No, no, I was just thinking, does it answer your question? Like, you know, your yeah. question was basically, uh, what happens to the other Navagrahas, right? Right. Um, I, I, I did not look at it now recently, Prabhu, but um, I know that from the past, not all the, all of them are there. Not all the nine. I don't think there's Pluto in it. So if no. I'm not wrong, there is Mercury, there is Venus, there is Jupiter, there is um, there Saturn. is Saturn, and uh, Jupiter. I remember these four for sure. I have to go back and check them. It's there in Bhagavatam. I remember reading it, but today for you know, it's something that you can't just remember like that. I I didn't go over this for this class, but uh, yeah, it's mentioned though. Thank you, much. Thank you. Sorry, who was asking? Oh, it's Giri Oh, my Krishna um, Matri. Um, like I was, I, I saw some part of uh, Vrindavan Prabhu's seminars like two, three years ago. The mm-hmm. seminar gave it ISV as well. Um, so I was just trying to corroborate it with that as, um, as well. Like I think he was explaining like um, what modern science describes as gravity is actually prana shakti. Um, mm-hmm. So does that kind of fit in here? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm sure there is something, right? I mean, otherwise, as we were talking, we would probably be floating. There is something holding us whole to the earth, right? Yeah, I mean, what whatever name you give it, you can give it gravity, pranashit, but it's surely existing. Yeah, I like the point that Prabhu already, probably Prabhu read it. I mean, uh, no, I, I had not come across. That's very nice. Thank you, Gildar. Yeah, it's called Pranashakti then. It's, it's actually um, Krishna's energy <laughs> that holds us. Any other questions? Anybody else? We have about nine minutes. Uh, I had a quick question. So uh, the galaxies that exist like beyond sun, uh, like modern day physics calls them Andromeda and all those distant galaxies that are like billions of light years away. Are those also a part of that uh, chandelier that the Dhruv uh, planet holds? Yes, probably. Everything in one universe, in everything in the universe we live in, yes. Yeah, everything is in that shell, right, Prabhu? One important thing, the shell is, um, also has different layers. You all, you have, we have to get rid of all those layers also to actually leave the shell and go back to the spiritual world. So absolutely, there cannot be outside the shell. It has to be in the shell and anything in the shell is held by Dhruvatara. It's the polar star that holds the whole thing together. There is actually a planetary system called a Shishumara. The Shishumara planetary system is holding the whole thing together. So is Dhruvaloka at the same height as Brahmaloka? Or like... Actually, actually, almost that height, but a little above, if I'm not wrong, because that's where, um, actually, you know what, one second. I read in Bhagavatam that they're actually on the same level because Brahma can actually approach uh, Shweta Dvipa. Shweta Dvipa is there in Dhrivaloka because Lord is always, he is always present with the Lord. So when Brahma has any problem in this world, he runs and goes to uh, the milk ocean, praying God, oh, you know, I have this uh, demon that's coming, you know, Ravana has been born or, you know, Hiranyakashipu is causing a concern. Brahma goes to Shweta Dvipa. So Shweta Dvipa is actually not different from Dhrivaloka. And then at the bottom most part also, uh, the Garbodakshaya Vishnu is residing. Yes. So- we basically have Lord at both places, at the bottom most part also and at the top most part also. Yes. According to atomic theory in Bhagavatam, Krishna is present in each and every atom. He's of course present in our heart too. Right. He's everywhere. And um, it also is mentioned according to the um, universal Virat Rupa that Krishna is present. We can look at everything around us and remember Krishna. The trees are his hair. The mountains are his bones. The rivers are his um, veins and uh, um, the arteries are the ocean. So that's why according to Ayurveda, if you go have a bath in the river, all your venal problems will be gone. And if you go have a bath in the uh, sea, all your arterial problems will be gone. That is the treatment for Ayurveda doctors, you should say, right? And it's actually part of the Ayurveda therapy because it's part of Krishna's uh, thing. And then you get purified. You know, that was the reason that in ancient days, they used to have this pushkaras they would do, you know, Godavari Pushkara or Krishna Pushkara. People would go have a bath in the uh, river. There is a reason to the whole thing, you know. So it's, people are just, 
even sea they go to the sea and some particular important days they would actually have a um, you know samudra uh, snan so that you know this is all very helpful you know but we need to know the science behind it so that we can actually explain it and um, you know benefit from it thanks mata ji and i had another quick question so does every time when a new uh, bubble emerges from the pores like a new universe this like same uh, these same people come into existence for example those nine sons and uh, the king no 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 prabhu or that is specific to our particular exactly universe. exactly and we read those stories because they have, they have lived in our planet our some of them actually uh, purified and went back to godhead so all the stories that we read in bhagavatam um you know agnidra specifically this is a very big story it's a story of how he gets attracted to purvachitti and you know there are other stories so every story that we look at is of the king that lived in this particular universe you usually will not and also specifically to where you live that is the bhagavatam you will get <laughs> it's amazing that you know prabhu was saying that the day that if suppose um, you lived in uh, indraloka the bhagavatam that you are reading would be different to what you're reading in the earth planet because there's more pertaining to people who lived there how they perfected their lives what all problems they had and how they perfect entire bhagavatam is talking about a devotee who actually is perfecting their lives by having problems it could be dhruva how he wanted to, the kingdom but he didn't he he radiated as in his uh, uh uh lord touched his head with a con she realized what was he asking for some some you know that's why he his grandfather is brahma you know right dravas drava is the son of uttanapada so brahma so he knows he wanted more higher than uh, uh, something more than his grandfather <laughs> so then he realizes this mistake and then he surrenders so these are all stories showing us that how we should actually not um, not be attached to things in this material world and get out of it Yeah, so the Bhagavatam would be different. I hope I answered your question. I just digressed. <laughs> no, it was very beautifully explained. Thank you. Sorry, what no. was your question, Prabhu? <laughs> it was like whether in each universe the same characters like no, come no. or yeah, and those. yeah, and also another thing is they will actually go right. I mean, now um, some of the some of the some of the characters we are reading have already gone back to Godhead. <laughs> right. but some of them are still here there bali maharaj is still there in sutal loka he is going to become the next indra the current indra will be gone the next manvantra and then next so bhagavatam actually talks about things that already happened talks about what happened it also talks about chanakya it will it also talks about what is going to happen next in next manvantra we are actually in the seventh manvantra now so we are it is brahma's afternoon now so brahma lives for 4000 yugas sorry Brahma's one day is four thousand yugas, one night is four thousand yugas. So you can imagine how long Brahma lives. So yeah, yes, Prabhu. Yeah, it's unimaginable in. Yeah, it's unimaginable with the, that's the reason we are very fortunate. We are living in Bharat Varsha. Our time of living is short. In the short life, just focus and get your life perfect and go back. That's what Shri Prabhupada says. <laughs> yeah, very beautiful perspective. thank you mataji for taking this the complex topic <laughs> and <laughs> presenting i know is the <laughs> one of the i think uh, i yeah, just I, for my purification prabhu no. <laughs> thank you for listening mataji just one question like sometime i again like how uh, ashram madhav prabhu was telling that we see right sometime video they show that uh, the earth is like revolving i don't know which video is that i where i have seen that they they, they show that from the sky like from the satellite and they take the video and then the earth is revolving so is that this kind of imaginary video or what video is that when they show that um, earth is revolving you mean like modern nasa scientists are showing earth is revolving yeah i mean in the sense yes, uh, i don't know if you might have seen some videos where where it says like it shows that like right some uh, video taken from the planet and then it showing that earth is revolving and i have never seen a planet that earth is revolving i see I I've see. always seen planet like Earth. You can see it as a globe. You know, like uh, if you see NASA's like people when they are take off and as they go go. I remember yeah. as a kid. As a kid, I remember there was one Indian astronaut that went to the space called Rakesh Malhotra, I think. I don't know somebody. So he was going. So they gave a live uh, thing of it when he was leaving Earth, and he he said. this looks like a beautiful globe and he was taking pictures and sending it that's the first time i saw but i don't know if i ever saw it moving prabhu 
Oh, okay. okay. I, I, it's very interesting to see some NASA thing where it's actually moving. Hmm. That okay. will clear Maybe all I... our questions. No, no. Those <laughs> I, I meant. I meant they saw the animations basically. Yeah, animation is animations. a very powerful exactly. tool. The sci- yeah. modern scientists use to kind of impress on the young children, young generation that this is the truth. Animation is very powerful, actually. Oh yeah, I think it's all am- animation, bro. Yeah, that's why I was thinking if it is <laughs> real thing, because yeah. that's what came into our and that's what is like stuck in our mind from seeing from that animations that okay, Earth is. <laughs> Earth is Everyone. moving. Earth is rotating. Yeah. Earth is moving around the sun and all that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is clear, Prabhu. And 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 their model also is able to calculate all the astronomical, you know, stars and everything. Is just that it is a very complicated model. The model the Bhagavatam has is a much much simpler model for doing the astronomical calculations. For those of you interested, please watch all the forty videos of Pavaneshwar Prabhu. It's amazing. I can actually just send it out. Maybe I can put in I weekend warriors because everybody here is there probably there because um, it is amazing. I mean, Prabhu calculates every bit in yojanas and how many yojanas are each and how far is this, how far is that, how far is actually sun, how far is moon, actually how close is Rahu <laughs> because Prabhupada says right they probably reached the Rahu planet instead of the moon because moon is closer in this distance but farther in 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 uh, the altitude. Sun is here, it's farther here, but it's it's closer in the height. You get me? So that's the reason Prabhupada always said they could not go to moon. <laughs> as far as the laws of mathematics refer to reality, they are not certain. But, as Mataji, do you have any picture with that sun and moon placement, Mataji? Just to understand what you said. Oh, yes, yes, yes. One second. Mataji, the amount of information Mataji has, she needs five sessions. One session. One <laughs> yeah, hour. that's what I was wondering. Maybe the, <laughs> one chapter, one, one hour for one session. Yeah. One chapter. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to try. Prabhu, all my, I don't have any real knowledge, Prabhu. I am just copy pasting here. And this is all from, um, this this video that I'm showing exactly is from Pavanesha Prabhu. But it's all about Bhakti Vedanta Vidya Beat. Okay, here Prabhu. So this is the earth. Now, moon is higher than it's in, you know, distance uh, is high and sun is almost, uh, almost to the equator. And this is Rahu. So we are closer to Rahu than moon. But again, remember, uh, as Prabhupada said, moon is very high. I mean, of course, it's not in scale, but it's so high. Now he's talking in this particular thing. Of course, he's talking about Uttarayana and Dakshinayana, you know, Uttarayana and Dakshinayana. So it, it makes it easy for us to understand how um, and again, remember, the sun is moving around the earth. So when sun is on this side, these people get um, um, day. And when sun goes on the other side, these people get night. I hope that helps. Sure, Mataji. Thank you. But there is a lot more uh, videos. Prabhu. I can just send the link. It's, it's beautiful. I actually literally almost watched all the 40 videos. I mean, this was a like year and a half ago when I did my fifth canto in Bhakti Vaiva. So, Mataji, in, so you are saying that in one day, um, like a sun is kind of can can rotate the whole whole circle of Mount Meru in one day of us? Oh, no, Manasutra Mountain. Uh, no, not one day. Oh, you hold on, hold on. So, Prabhu gives the exact scale. Yeah, it must be one day, Prabhu. Absolutely, because that's why we have our globe has half. Half people have no day and half people have night, right? Yeah. So how that day That's and night comes? That's a question. Yes, Prabhu. They, it, it is. I will, of course, try. I, I will surely check again. But it is, it is, it has to be, right, Prabhu? Because when we have morning, Australia has night. You know? So I mean, on Bhagavatam, the other side of the globe. In Bhagavatam also, Prabhupada explains that sun is traveling at a speed of, yeah. I believe, around 10,000 miles per hour. Yeah. Yeah, per, yeah, yeah. per second, sorry, per second. Per second, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that should explain why and how, how fast it can cover the entire. Uh, the yeah, world, right? that's right. Bumandala, sorry. And and it has its axle is basically like goes stretches from that edge, which is which is that mm-hmm. circumference, which has those four different Indra, Varuna, and all. And yeah. then the other side of the axle basically touches the Meru mountain. So it's like two spokes. Exactly, Prabhu. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's like uh, you know the he compares it in bhagavata it is just compared to the oil pulling machine oil pulling machine yeah where the cows are i mean cows. bulls go around right. and you have the axle is given a beautiful description in bhagavata actually i mean yeah. this these topics are like never ending <laughs> they are so interesting <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really very good for the inquisitive mind and hopefully helps you know i was also thinking so much of technicality do i really need to know so much in detail this nothing to do with bhakti but then prabhu said you need to know every bit of which place is what <laughs> when you when you're going away from the material world don't get attracted to anything there will be mangoes dripping from here they will do celestial damsels dancing here wow oh, and i have nothing to do with this place <laughs> i said best is to close your eyes and reach krishna's lotus feet <laughs> ஒரு <laughs> so i can share yeah thank you thank you all so much hari krishna thank you uh, giridhar for doing the live and uh, thank you all i'm very happy that you know we were able to uh, i was personally able to understand a little bit more because i read uh, some more so thank you all so much.